if you're really committed to developing your cardiorespiratory fitness, uh, you know, I think I talked about this on one of the podcasts, maybe it was on Tim's podcast. Um, you're trying to maximize the area of a triangle, right? So the triangle has a base and the triangle has a peak. And the goal is how big an area can I get? Not how wide, not how tall. You don't want one that's this wide and this tall, and you don't want one that's this tall and this wide. You want the max. The base is your zone two. The peak is your VO2 max. From a training perspective, the rule of thumb that is applicable for people like us, i.e. normal people, and the best athletes in the world is roughly 80-20. 80% of your volume is down here, 20% of your volume up here. In fact, some of the really, really elites are probably closer to 90-10. So you're saying no matter if you're just an ordinary athlete or you're the best of the best, it's still roughly the same. Tadi Pogacar, who's the greatest cyclist on this planet, two-time winner of the Tour de France, um, you know, absolutely mopping up the field of cyclists like their children, that guy's doing 80 to 90% of his training at zone two. And I know that for a red fact because we know who his coach is. So, so then let's maybe talk about that pyramid. So maybe let's just step back and say- I didn't answer your question, by the way, about the VO2 max, which we can come to, but- yeah, yeah, so maybe I was just gonna say, maybe let's just cover the whole pyramid. So what's the training of the whole pyramid? If you know it's kind of 80%, 20%, let's break out- So I just start like. with how much time am I willing to put into this? Now, I gotta be honest with you. I wish I could be putting 10 hours a week into cardio. I do. I mean, historically, I've put in 14 to 20 hours a week into cardio up until 10 years ago. So- like I really miss those days. I miss being insanely fit. You know, I miss I, I, I miss that terribly. And I miss I miss the joy of that much training. Um, it's simply not possible today. I, you know, for all of the obligations that I have and th there's I've done the math ten ways to Sunday, I'd have to give up something I'm not willing to give up. I would have to give up archery or give up driving or give up my kids or something like that. I'm just I'm not willing to give any of these things up. So yeah, I basically start with what's the most amount of time I can put into dedicated cardio. And for me, it's like four to five hours a week, not including rucking. I sort of keep that in its own bucket. So then it's a very simple calculation. 80% of that time is zone two and 20% of that time is VO2 max. And how are you breaking out? Let's just start with zone two. How many? I divide it into four workouts a week. So four? Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And do you always recommend doing it over very, like, let's say you could do four hours in one day. Is there the same benefit of doing all your zone two in one day versus spreading it out? No, I think, you know, I've talked about this with Inigo. His view is if you can get at least 30 to 45 minutes, you should spread them out. So again, if you're only able to commit an hour to it, it might be one hour once or 30 minutes twice. Um, but I'm sort of doing <clears throat> 45 to 45 minutes to 60 minutes each time is what I do. And are you doing zone two VO2 max on the same day? One of those days. So Saturday, uh, so Tuesday, Thursday is just zone two. Uh, and then two long sessions of uh, stability training. So it's like, call it an hour of zone two, an hour of stability. Actually, why don't I just walk you through the whole week? Yeah. That'll be easier. So Monday is just strength training. So that's about uh, 90 minutes to two hours when you include the stability training that I do as well. So movement prep, stability training, strength training, and that's all lower body. That's Monday. Uh, Tuesday is zone two followed by dedicated hour of stability. Wednesday is uh, upper body strength and stability. Again, 90 minutes to two hours. Thursday is a repeat of Tuesday. Friday is a repeat of Monday. Saturday is zone two in the morning, upper body strength, repeat of Wednesday in the afternoon. Sunday is zone two followed by VO2 max. And will you ever do VO2 max before you do zone two? Um. I generally don't just because I like to have a lot of reps before I go for broke. So even when I was like a cyclist and doing two zone VO2 max workouts a week, they were always preceded by 
a long, uh, the metric we would use um, on a bike was kilojoules. So it was how many kilojoules of work would you do before you would do the super hard sets? And it had to be at least a thousand kilojoules, which would translate to at least a thousand calories of work. And for zone two, I know you said you kind of like to break it up. Is if someone is like, hey, you know, I can do four days a week of zone two, but I can only do 15 minutes a day. Would you say? Then I'd compress it. I would say do two thirties. So, so in your zone two sessions, you like to do at least 30? At a minimum, yeah. And now when you're in those zone twos, are you, like when you hit the bike and the clock starts? No, I take 10 minutes. I, I'm on, I do all mine on a bike, um, sometimes on a treadmill. But y what I do is there's a, like a, a little, it's a, it's, it's the, the computer is programming to the Wahoo kicker, which is the device I'm sitting on. So it's, it's taking 10 minutes to ramp me up. Mm -hmm. And maybe just walk through what modalities can people do zone two on treadmill, bike, anything that is steady state. So, you know, swimming is a great way to do it. Cause you can really swim in a pool at a steady state. Um, running is a great way to do it. Cause you can pretty much run at a steady state. Cycling outdoors is generally hard um, unless you have specific, like Fiesta Island was a great place to train. I used to train at Fiesta Island because for people who don't know where that is in San Diego, it's where all with the time trial bike races were. And it's just a seven kilometer loop that you can ride on without lights or any, like there's no traffic or anything that gets in your way. But f for the most part, like I wouldn't be able to do zone two outside here in Austin. It's just, it's too hilly and there's too much traffic and it, it just, it, it's, it, it's fits and starts. I can do my VO2 max here because I go to a hill and that's my favorite way to do VO2 max is on a hill that's about a mile long and just do very hard up the hill and then easy down the hill. But um, <clears throat> a treadmill is another great way to do it. Just kind of a walking incline typically. <clears throat> Rowing machine, if you're really a good rower, um, you have to be efficient enough. Most people are not efficient enough and they just they don't have the strength, they don't have the stability to row really well for 45 minutes. Stair climber is another really good one. Um, but, you know, it depends. Again, if you're, if you're starting out, brisk walking is probably good enough too. Yeah, and we, we don't have to get into all the reasons of the benefits of Zone 2 because we have so many podcasts with Inigo San Milan people can listen to, but you kind of hinted at another thing there, which is, you know, when you start your zone two workouts, you'll ramp up, but also a lot of times we get questions where, you know, Hey, I did a 90 minute workout and I was in zone two for 45 minutes of it. Is that, am I good? No. I mean, what I think what you mean in that question is, you know, like I went out for a three hour bike ride today. And, um, when I got back, my computer told me I was in, I did 44 minutes of zone two. So two issues there. One is that's just a zone two based on heart rate. That's generally the worst approximation of zone two. So zone two really is more based on lactate if we're going to be purely accurate or at a minimum, um, RPE. But even if you posit that that 45 minutes of zone two from your heart rate is roughly accurate, it's not the same physiologically because usually you're passing in and out of zone two in that situation. And so you're not getting kind of that constant steady state churn, which you're looking for. What you're really kind of looking for is the harnessing of mitochondrial efficiency. And to do that, you just, you have to be able to push oxidative phosphorylation right to its limit before you trip into glycolysis. And you're just, you're at the limit of that glycolysis being the dominant energy source. Whereas if you're on that ride, you're going into and out of glycolysis constantly. So it's not that you're so much in zone two for 45 minutes as that you passed through zone two for a sum total of 45 minutes, which again, that's, there's, still, there's still value in that, <clears throat> but not for what we're talking about. Yeah. And what about VO2 max? What modalities can you do VO2 max training on? Uh, you know, here I think it's it's probably easier in a way, right? Because it's pretty much anything that gets your heart rate up and gets you very tired. Um, so, you know, look, it could be a, a, you know, an air bike, it could be a regular bike, it could be a stationary bike, stair climber, treadmill, running outside, you know, the sky's almost the limit. You know, it's it's hard to do it 
on, you know, it's hard, it would be hard to do it. I'm trying to think. I mean, heck, you could probably do it with something like burpees is probably pretty tough once you get into something that intense, like jumping, because the sweet spot for VO2 max is kind of three to eight minute intervals. So you don't want to be doing things that are so intense that you can't do them for at least three minutes. Um, and, and so that's why I'd kind of hold off on that stuff. I mean, when I was young and I was really fit, I did, I did a lot of it with jumping, but like those, I mean, I can't jump for three minutes anymore. Like I don't have, it's just uh, that, you know, I'm not that fit anymore. So I have to rely on easier things. And so what's your, what's your current VO2 max workout? So you mentioned kind of three to eight minutes on, is it? Typically I do four on four off is, is sort of where I'm spend most of my time, sometimes three on three off on a rowing machine. Um, I got into that quite a bit last summer, but these days, um, and sometimes by the way, I just am in a bit of a rush and I'll just do one minute on two minute off at a much higher intensity on the stair climber. So I have one of those like industrial grade strength climbers. And sometimes I'll just go sprint for a minute up the stairs and then it takes me two minutes to get my heart rate back down to about a hundred and then repeat that for 20 to 30 minutes. So that's kind of like my poor man's cheating VO two max workout. Um, but what I really like to do is four minute repeats, four minutes on four minutes off. And on the four minutes on, are you going a hundred percent for the full, like how, how should someone think about? Yeah, this is one of those things you have to, you have to play with this. There's a, (laughs) this is years and years of practice to know what that feels like. Um, so again, I'm doing this on a bike, so I'm looking at wattage and, um, my Watts are so low now I'm embarrassed. So I'm not going to tell you what the Watts are because they're so much lower than they used to be, but I know I have a sense of what I need to average my wattage over those four minutes. So, I might go out at 105% of that wattage. And it feels pretty easy for the first minute. If it doesn't, I've gone too hard. By three minutes, I'm very uncomfortable. And at a minute, I'm, I mean, at, with, at that, in that last minute, i.e. at four minutes, I'm, I don't have much left. <clears throat> so that's, you, you know, if you go out, all out in that first minute, you're not going to get to four minutes. You're, you're just going to crash and you're, you're sort of not in that zone. You want to, so it's not, there's no question. I positive split the thing, meaning I do more work in the first half than the second, but I don't want it to be more than about 10%. 